Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about why there are times that you do not want to listen to your body. If you don't open yourself up to being aware, then what's going to happen is you're going to only listen to the signals you really ever pay attention to. And those signals that we tend to only ever pay attention to tell us to distract ourselves, to not move, to eat whatever we crave. And if you only listen to those signals, well then listening to your body is a bad idea. Later we talk about how activity snacks between meals can build muscle. You're gonna wanna stick around and find out what an activity <laughs> snack is, as well as other topics. In the second half of the episode, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions such as, I don't have a dip bar, what can I do instead? What is the best way to prepare for a PR day? What MAPS program do you recommend for cutting and bulking? And what can I do to reduce my social anxiety in the gym? One more thing, we have another channel. It's called Mind Pump Clips. If you haven't been over there to check it out, go check it out. We have short clips, easy to watch, easy to share. Enjoy the show. All right, check this out. Don't listen to your body. Now, I know I've said in the past, listen to your body, <laughs> but here's the challenge with that is a lot What's of you happening? <laughs> don't know how to listen to your body or you pick and choose what you listen to. For example, I've had people tell me this. Well, if I listen to my body, my body says to watch TV all day long and eat donuts. No moron. That's not what we're talking about. So before you start to listen to your body, understand how to listen to the signals, develop the skill and pay attention to the full picture. Only then can you listen to your body? My body's a wonderland, so. <laughs> yes, that's great. So what does that look like? Well, so this is and so this is a bit of a process, right? Because um, it's like telling people how to listen to the body to eat right. And what happens is they only have really ever paid attention to the signals of cravings and hunger. So to them, listening to their body means eating junk food all the time. Yeah. So the first step is to really pay attention to all the signals. So, okay, the skin issues that I've ignored for years. Well, that's a signal. Um, the fact that I wake up grumpy or that I wake up uh, in the middle of the night two times or I have poor sleep. Uh, my skin and my nails and my hair, my poor digestion, my gas, my bloating, um, my, my energy crashes in the middle of the day. Like I have to listen to all of those things, not just cravings, and, you know, okay, well, right now I don't want to work out. You know, I just want to be lazy or whatever. Like you have to have really a full picture. Otherwise, the only signals you're going to listen to are the unhealthy ones. Yeah. And those unhealthy signals, if you don't have the context of the full picture, well, yeah, now listening to your body is a bad idea. Well, you actually have to do the work before you actually get a good signal from your body, right? So, like, it, you have to actually go through the process of becoming hungry, which is one thing that uh, I, I think that uh, a high majority of people probably haven't actually gone to that level of actually depriving themselves um, to the point where it's not just cravings that you're feeling as opposed to actual real hunger. This is why I think fasting is so is such an important practice for people to incorporate it because I, I mean, it's still to this day, every time that I do a, you know, one day, two day or three day fast, um, I notice something different that I didn't notice before. And so even uh, you think with all the experience that we have and the point you're making right now about learning to listen to your body, you would think that we had that all dialed in, but it, I'm, I'm, every time I do it, I, I notice something else. I notice another food that I, I, I eat on a, a fairly regular base, like doesn't agree with me as much as I thought it agreed with me. And I think that's the way to do it is to, to eliminate everything, to get to a place where you haven't had any food for at least 24 hours. And then as you slowly reintroduce, really pay attention. You're right. Because <laughs> so uh, to add to that, right? So most people, in, and I guess in modern societies, have never really felt like real hunger. Like think about the last time you went for longer than, let's say, 48 hours without food, right? Most people haven't, unless they were like in the hospital, really ill or something like that. Most people have never really done that. So what we attribute hunger to is actually cravings where cravings are very different than actual real hunger. Like real hunger looks something like this. If I'm actually really hungry, almost anything uh, that I can eat sounds appealing. Almost anything. Like, oh, that sounds really good. I think I'm going to eat that. Cravings looks like this. Um, yeah, I don't really feel like that. I don't feel like that. Ooh, this sounds really good. That's more uh, along the lines of cravings. So that's a really, really good point. The other one would be like pain. Um, there's good pain mm -hmm. and there's bad pain, right? So... What's good pain? Well, the pain of, of pushing your body, 
of your muscles burning, uh, of you know pushing your cardiovascular stamina. Like that, that hurts, but that's a good pain. What's bad pain? Well, joint pain, um, pain from excessive inflammation because your diet's really bad, uh, pain from digestive issues. Like that's not good either. But if you don't feel and experience all of them and you don't open yourself up to being aware, paying attention to those things, then what's going to happen is you're going to only listen to the signals you ever really ever pay attention to. And those signals that we tend to only ever pay attention to tell us to distract ourselves, to not move, to eat whatever we crave. Um, and if you only listen to those signals, well, then listening to your body is a bad idea. So this is a process of becoming aware. It is a process of paying attention to the big picture. Here's another one, right? Uh, when you're exercising or working out, there's a lot of signals that you could potentially pay attention to. But most people really only pay attention to like... <clears throat> Uh, how I look in the mirror and the scale, mm -hmm. right? If you only look at the scale, for example, a lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things can go wrong. If you only look at the mirror, a lot of things can go wrong as well, mainly because we tend to be very, it's a subjective thing. And we tend to, especially when you have some body issues or body image issues, what you see in the mirror can be distorted. So if you're not paying attention to things like mobility, strength, energy, you know, how I feel before, during, and after the workout, right? Um, yeah, you know, pain, good pain versus bad pain. Yeah, hair, mood, sleep, nails, yeah, all you that stuff. You don't pay attention to all that stuff and you just look at the scale. Well, then, okay, you could starve yourself and beat the crap out of yourself. And wow, look, the scale is going down. Or let's say you're trying to gain weight. Let's say you're, you're like I was as a kid. Well, man, I would eat foods that would bloat me on purpose because I noticed the scale would go up. I would eat foods that would just make the scale go up, right? Um, and I wouldn't pay attention to lot, lots of those other things. In fact, this was a, uh, and I know you guys have talked about this as well. This was such an important way that I was able to train clients that I figured out later on. Cause initially I also as a trainer only looked at things like scale in the mirror. Cause that's mm -hmm. what the clients wanted. So I was always trying to show them the scale moving and the mirror changing. Um, later on I figured out, cause and that's a hard thing to do in the first 30 to 60 days, especially if you do it right, those things may not change that much. Later on, I realized like, Oh, I'm going to help this client pay attention to certain things. So they'd come in and be like, Hey, so we've been working out for four weeks but I really haven't lost any weight. Well, but how's your sleep? How's your libido? How's your energy? Hey, that knee pain that you talked about when we first started, I noticed you haven't talked about it much recently. Does that feel better? Mm -hmm. And then the client would almost have this epiphany like, oh, wow, yeah, I, I am noticing those things. And it's, it's, it's a, as if they were uh, uh, unconscious of those changes because they weren't even aware, they, they weren't even paying attention. But when you bring them to light, then they're like, oh, wow, you know what? I do notice those things. That's really interesting. Um, and then they develop a better relationship with exercise that, you know, contributes to longevity, a long-term relationship with exercise. I believe there's a little bit of uh, denial that comes with it too. Because at least in my experience, the the clients, when we finally figure out like some of these things that don't agree with them, it almost always is stuff that they love. Mm. It's almost always foods that you eat on a regular basis. That's why they've ignored those bad signals. And so you're yeah. just you're in denial of like how it's affecting your digestive system it's and like how a protective mechanism. We're just gonna like conveniently ignore that part. Yeah, and you 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 know you'd ask you you ask as a question. You start as a or as a coach. You're asking these kind of questions like you know are, are do you have an intolerance to this or does this bother you? How do you feel? Oh no, I've I've been eating that for years. Yeah. I feel I feel fine off of that. And then it, eventually what ends up happening is you, you dig deep enough and we find out that like, oh, that's the culprit yeah. and that's tough, man. How about things like alcohol or caffeine or even nowadays cannabis? Like I've had clients who have issues with sleep and we've gone down the list of things. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you know, let's try avoiding that morning coffee. Oh, it's not coffee. Definitely not coffee. I've been having it for years. Uh, you know, I have it first thing in the morning, <laughs> 7 a.m. There's no way. It's not the coffee, not the coffee. And then through pers persuasion, tenacity, and whatever, I get them to finally eliminate the coffee. And then they're like, it was the coffee. Well, I, re I remember, I remember right. how long it took me to let go of, of sugar and ice cream. I mean, still to this day, it's something that I, I want to, to have. And I, but at least now, I'm fully aware, like, it's the culprit. And so it's like, at, at least I can titrate it and go like, okay, it's been a month or two since I've had something like that. I'm in a low calorie right now. This, If I was going to try or do something, this is the time to do it. Um, where in the past I was like, oh, no way. I've been doing that for yep. uh, ice cream every night for, you know, two decades or I had candy all the time. Like, and so I think it's really tough to, to come to grips with that. And you, you subconsciously want to ignore 
all those those signs. And so you first have to accept that there is a possibility that these foods that are not agreeing with you and that are potentially slowing your progress and causing these things um, are the things that you love most. And so that's, and it's common. That's tough. It's common. I don't want people to feel bad right now. Everybody does this. We subconsciously mm-hmm. ignore the things that we don't want to look at. Um, so this does take some work. I actually had a client once. This was hilarious. She was tracking for me, her food, and it, things weren't really adding up. And so through questioning, I, I realized that when she goes grocery shopping, she would grab chocolate almonds, you know, in those barrels or whatever, and she'd eat them while she was grocery shopping. And I'm like, you don't track those? She goes, no, I don't. She's like, oh my God, I guess I should. I'm like, why do you think you're not tracking those? She goes, I don't think I wanted to, but I didn't realize that. I'm like, well, you're probably eating like 200, 300 calories worth of chocolate almonds while you're grocery shopping. <laughs> That's probably why. And, and, and it was steal- a bit, it was mind blowing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't count. count. <laughs> you know, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eating on the move doesn't count. No. <laughs> right? Yeah. Those open, con- uh, those uh, open everybody's barrels. Everybody's guilty of that. Yeah, At least one. On. Everyone's, everyone's stolen. You know what? The next time I ask somebody if they've ever stolen before, they tell me no. I'm going to call a liar. Like everybody's, yeah. Had at least one of those chocolate almonds. At least one. <laughs> a gummy bear or something yeah, like that. Yeah. What's up, everyone? Today's program giveaway is MAPS Split. This is a pure, advanced bodybuilding routine. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And also make sure you turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And if we pick your comment, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Split. Also, we got a sale going on right now. We put together an at-home holiday bundle. So these are all programs that are very suitable for at-home use, meaning you don't need equipment or you only need minimal equipment to follow all of these programs. So you get MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Suspension, MAPS Prime, and the No BS six-pack formula. Normally would retail for over $330, but right now with this bundle, with this special, you get all of them for $99.99. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below to get signed up. All right, here comes the show. I think I told you guys this about my grandfather. I went grocery shopping with him once and uh, you know how they weigh your vegetables? He would, he took, he had scissors in his pocket. Oh yeah. You've he'd take them out and he'd clip cut the off, stems, clip the stems and the leaves off. I'm so like, why are you wait a little bit? Less. That's somebody that I'm like, grew, no, hey, no. that's somebody who grew up in the great depression dude, right there. Yeah, that's, I'd said, no, no, dude. what are you doing? He goes, I'm not eating this. I'm not going to pay for the leaves in the stem. I've heard, I heard, uh, <laughs> I heard Dave Ramsey tell a story about it. Cause his father grew up through the great depression. And he's, he says he's got some, obviously some of his good saving habits and stuff from his father. And one of the things he, he remembers as a kid is helping his dad, like on it, like repair a deck and stuff and when he would do it he oh. would pull the old nails out mm-hmm. and save the nails and reuse them and reuse them and he's like that i mean that yeah, you just gotta be real like crafty with super that too. Free, frugal too right oh, i mean yeah. to save a nail that's been used for dude, probably my dad because my dad grew up super poor like you know in comparison to how we all live like really poor and i can see in his face the pain and he really holds it back he really does hold it back but i can see the pain in his face every time i do something or i pay for something that I could do myself. So yeah. be like, you got your oil changed today? Like, yeah, yeah, I took it to the place. And I could see in his face, he's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, or he came over once and I had a gardener mowing the lawn. Yeah. Oh, you got somebody uh, mowing, I mean, how is, mowing your lawn? Uh, yeah, <laughs> how has your relationship like been with that? I feel like I go back and forth on those things all the time, right? Like, it's, you, I think. I, I always have to, I, ha- I feel like I have to have like a check-in with myself. Like, because I've made the case and the argument that it's, it's buying time, right? Yes. And so- uh, if I can outsource things like cleaning my house, changing my oil, doing things, washing my car, things like that to somebody else, it, it gets me back time that I can spend with my son, spend Correct. with my wife or, or spend on work, doing things that I love. Correct. And so that that's how I justified it. But then there is also what I'm, I guess, learning as a father now, the, uh, some of the value of actually doing some of those things with my son, right? And so I've actually washed my car more in the last three years than I did the previous five years. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wrestle with that sometimes of, okay, am I doing it because I'm really getting back time and buying time so I could go and, and, and and reinvest that time. And these other things I I say are so important to me, 
or do I find myself scrolling or and doing something that is, isn't as valuable to me? And am I really utilizing it that way? What a great, mm -hmm. what a great uh, exercise, mental exercise that you're doing. I, I I try to do the same thing. So, I you know to spend time with your little ones. If I sometimes I'll find myself thinking of ways that we could play, and I'm sitting there like thinking of ways when many household chores are a wonderful way to play with your kid. It takes a lot longer and stuff, but what's the big deal? You're going to do play with them for an hour anyway, mm -hmm. but it also teaches them responsibility and they contribute. So I'm with you, dude. So I do weigh it out. There's certain things that I'll, yeah. that I'll pay for other things that I won't. Um, and you're right. I think if you pay for someone to do something for you so that you could sit down and distract yourself on worthless social media, probably not a good a good trade. Yeah, right? I've I mean this is always a conversation like I'm having and it's really just been on the end of like trying to free myself up and be okay with that because it is again, like I grew up like that too. My dad very handy, you know, and that was all passed down. My mom's dad, you know, my grandpa very handy. And um, you know, that was like a big uh source of, of pride, you know, in the family and, and stuff. And so I, I would like learned and I shadowed a bunch of uh, different types of tradesmen and for various things from plumbing to electricity to whatever, you know, involving the house. And so I know a lot, but at the same time, like, I don't want to do all those things yeah. anymore. Like, I just don't want to do it. And, but so for me, it's really like, if there's, is there an opportunity for me to spend time to kind of like teach my, my sons, this very specific thing. Like I could, I could take as an example, I know right away, like this is probably going to be like a 15 minute job versus like hours, you know? Yeah. And so the hours one I'm done. Like you're, I'm getting a guy, you're, you're coming to my house, you're doing it. Um, but if it's one of those kind of one-off things, like I, I'll take the tools and then I'll bring the boys with me yeah. and then we'll, we'll work our way through it. And I had to like pull myself back, like, be okay with the time it takes for them to mess up and to um, struggle through it because yeah. that, that was the biggest thing. Like I never, like I, I always felt like this intense pressure when I was around my dad or, or around like these other guys, like to get it right the very first time. And they get frustrated with me if I fuck it up, you know? And you so, know what meme I think about when you tell a story like that? Have you seen the meme where the, the hold the flashlight for your dad? Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> Every, every the, the amount of insults you receive, dude, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> every, every young boy, you drop been, it up. Young boys would either slapped upside the head or yeah. yell derogatory things yes. when I holding the flashlight. Yes, right. dude. I learned a lot <laughs> totally, of totally. You know, it's funny when I got my first job. I remember my bosses being like, "You're like the most respectful employee, like this and that." And I totally learned it from working with my dad. Like when I work with my dad, I couldn't put my hands in my pocket. I'd sit there and wa and he wanted. He always told me, "If you're not doing anything, you're watching me and you're learning." Mm. And, he, and so I'd mm -hmm. watch him and I put my hands in my pocket and then I'd get this dirty look like, why well, you, you know, and I, now as a kid, I'm like, what's the big deal yeah. as an adult. Now I know what that's that, you know, what I, what I'm displaying is like, Oh, no, you know, I'm kind of lazy or whatever. Yeah. So, and it was, it was little things like that, that I think, you know, make a big difference, but you bring up really good points, Justin. It, I same first time I would do those things with the Aurelius, I'd get a little frustrated but then I'm like, wait, the point isn't to finish quickly here. No. The point no. is <clears throat> to spend time with him. Throw that idea away. Yeah, because yeah, what I'll do, like when we do the dishes, he puts the silverware away, right? But mm -hmm. he's two. So how do, what does he do? <laughs> he throws them in whatever drawer he feels is yeah. where they're supposed to go. Yeah, sure. So I go behind them and I yeah. put them away. And then when I'm doing the dishes, you know, I hand him certain things and he, you know, tries to put it in and I got to <clears> fix it or whatever. But, you know, we're spending time. It's funny. You know which one I had this, the biggest struggles with were like a nanny and a house cleaner and that kind of stuff. Cause my mom raised four kids and did everything. And, but I do realize that we were in front of the TV a lot. Like my mom was like, sit down, watch TV. I got to go make bread. Yeah. I got to get dinner ready. I got to wash all these clothes. So I'm like, wait a minute, that's not a bad trade to have somebody clean the house so that we could spend time with the kids and teach them things and give them that attention. Mm -hmm. Rather than being like, because my mom's funny about this. She came over the other day and she's like, oh, the TV's a great babysitter. Jessica's like, you shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. You shouldn't say that. But I mean, they, they couldn't afford, I mean, they couldn't afford any. My mom had to make a lot of, do a lot of things herself because they couldn't afford it. So, you know, yeah. speaking about television and the kids, I was uh, out, I was talking to the boys, all the, the production team. And, you know, they're all younger guys in their early 20s. And we were just talking about fatherhood and stuff and, and, and tech and sugar. And, 
and it's been an interesting uh journey for me it's like you know we're three years deep now into watching like uh that and i and i go back and forth on this also i remember obviously we all know what i said when i first started and i totally lost that battle right when i thought i was he was never going to see television for like five six years right <laughs> i really believe that can i tell you that yeah. every new parent every new parent right before they become know, a parent it's good I, to have that I motivation you well know, i appreciate you guys not being cocksuckers about it no I because really, we were the same we're like way. it's gonna work itself out. yeah yeah, yeah. So we like, probably i, I would have got shit. really i would i probably would have got really mad and i probably would have been more staunch about it if you guys were yeah. like like oh yes you will then i'd be like okay no i'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> suffering the whole time uh but you, you know there's because there are some things that uh you know he has this this uh pbs app um that he uses that i, I mean i like it like it it's educational, right? It's teaching him colors and shapes and countries and things like that. And so it's interactive. And, you know, I've seen his vocabulary come up because of it. And I'm like, okay, like, it's not all bad, right? Introduced him to parsley. Right? Yeah, that's what introduced him to parsley, actually. So, I mean. He loves parsley like his dad. Yeah. He certainly does. <laughs> You guys can get mad at you guys. I, I, do, I do that so much best. now. It's so bad. So He'll bad. never yeah. say it right I now, know, I know. Just because I know, I know. But, um. Uh, Anyways, I was telling uh, telling the guys that that there's definitely like this um, this bell curve with it, right? So um, if I do certain things, right? So first of all, starting the day off, uh, not allowing any of it, right? So you know, getting his routine, yeah. which is Katrina brushing his teeth and doing yeah. his getting his his breakfast and kind of like he gets to play with his toys for a little bit, and then getting him outside or he goes to school, right? So interaction socially, getting him outside. And then towards the end of the day, like late afternoon, early evening, we'll give them like about an hour of it. And that, I have found that that's about the total amount that I, we can allot him in a day without seeing negative effects. What are the negatives that you see? Oh, man. Does he, he get irritable and short? He gets irritable. Yep. He doesn't go to bed as uh, as well. Yep, like yep. He's harder to put down. We he see the same doesn't, thing. doesn't stay down as mm -hmm. consistently. By the way, it oh. doesn't change as they grow up. I see this with oh. my teenagers. Yep. Well, and this is what I've heard, right? So I've heard 100%. you talk about that, and, and I've heard people say that. So like that's always in the back of my mind that I want to make sure I stay on top of this. And I, and I also understand that these kids are going to grow up in this world, and I would be, I think, silly to have tried to do what I originally said, which is like, like not let him have any, it's like, they're going to grow up in that world. I also don't want to have the kid that's like, what's that? Mm -hmm. And then the kids are like, it's a television. You don't know what that is. Like, you don't want, you don't want that. But then at the same time too, building in these, these habits and routines that I think are, are good and healthy for him to counter that. You know what? So two things, uh, and I got a study for you, bro. Both you guys actually will like this study and I've been implement, I've been trying this. I haven't been doing it long enough to notice, uh, much yet. I've noticed a little bit, but I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So what was the last thing you said about, uh, about the bell curve of yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that that he's that it starts to have negative effects after he's been after he's been on it for an extended right. So let me get to the study for, amount of time. Let me get to the study first. So I read a study that that because there are negative effects when kids are on um, watching TV or on electronics for too long, and studies now are showing this. Right, they lose that they get kind of develop almost like ADD tendencies, irritability, um, you know that kind of stuff. They don't pay attention very well. I saw a study where when the kids are watching television while interacting with the parents. In other words, we're watching something together and we're talking about what's happening on the TV. Like, wow, did you see that? Oh my God, that car's so fast. Or wow, did you look at that? That's cool. Look at the caterpillar, whatever. It dramatically, according to the study, negates the, the negative effects. So I started doing this with Aurelius. Mm. So we're watching hmm. videos. And by the way, I pick videos that allow me to engage more. So I've been finding videos on YouTube where people are narrating books. So it's a book and the pages flip and then the guy's talking and there's a little bit of animation, but it's mainly just the book. And then I'm talking to him yeah. while we're watching it and it's a totally different experience. So that's okay. So mm -hmm. that is, I mean, something that I think that we have uh, figured out unintentionally, and that's the and that's why I keep referring to this PBS app. I recommend it to you. You should you should yeah you did. So it it's it's all interactive stuff, and so and his favorite thing is to do it with me. So he'll yeah. get, he'll grab his See, iPad. I think that's so different. And he'll sit in my lap, yep. and then and that's like the whole you know the parsley joke is that's a cooking app, right? Mm -hmm. And so he lays in my lap, and he'll you know open the fridge, or he'll tell me, "Daddy, open it," and I open it, and then you know what's this, and he's asking, and so we're dragging and dropping, we're talking about what it is, and so it does feel less like we are just, you know, uh, zombies in front of yeah. a television or in front of an iPad and that we're playing together and interacting and educating. So that's where I've kind of like loosened up on 
so how I was with it originally because I was like, okay, this isn't all bad. He's playing with me. We're learning. We're interacting. Like I see positive benefits right. in that. Yeah, that's interesting. That study kind of confirms that too. Like and I've noticed, and this is what will also motivate me to do that a bit more often. I used to try and like really intentionally would come in, even with my oldest son, because at this point he's like playing online with his friends. Like he's at, he's moved away from iPad and phone, and, and he's now doing more like PlayStation stuff mm -hmm. and like interacting. But he's like on Red Dead Revolver or whatever the the, the latest game is for them to play. And so I'll just come in there and sit in and then like get, you know, the, the, uh, story and like whatever, like they're trying to do within this like game or like, and so he explains it to me in this whole thing. And, he, and then, so later on, like, he'll just come home from school and say, dad, you know, I, I got to this level and then this guy, you know, said this and he's got, uh, this kind of disease and it's weird. And blah. I'm like, Pfft. Like, I don't care. But yeah. <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, yeah, wow, that's Dude, interesting. Tell me more. My you know? oldest used to tell me about games. They'd be like, tell me you know, what's going on. And he would go on about, and I could not follow what was going on, yeah. but I was like trying really hard to be, you know, like yeah. involved or whatever. No, I think it makes uh, it makes a big difference. Because think about the other op the other way people use TV. They'll put the kid in front of it or in front of the iPad, and it's like, ball, they're zombies. Yes. And they get no interaction. Think about it this way. When you watch family movies, Okay, you're sitting down with your kids. You guys are all watching a move together, laughing together, talking about what just happened or whatever. Very different than when they're by themselves just zoned well, out. Well, I, I definitely totally. feel like there are, just like with nutrition, I feel like there are examples of healthy tech and there's junk food tech. So there's tech that I see as like fruits and vegetables and whole whole foods, and then there's tech that I look at and I it's see garbage. is just candy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and you can and I feel like I can see the way it stimulates him the same way. Like there's certain cartoons that like Katrina and I yeah. have to eliminate off of that that are just like crazy explosions and and like fighting and like just like loud noises and they it's it totally mesmerizes. I, honestly, them. I I don't like those sandbox games. Uh, for for that reason, because they just get into their own immersive world, and they're not doing anything. What's productive. that? What's a sandbox? So it's like where they can all meet up and like uh, like a Roblox or one of those kind uh, of the uh, games uh. where they're just like running around and like shooting each other yeah. or like there's no objective and there's no consequences and there's no like mission. And you know, like a lot of the video games we grew up with, like were really hard. You had to like work through all of these like challenges. And then you get like some sense of like ownership and pride because I like, I beat this boss and it was really hard. And, it, and they're just like, bleh, bleh, like just shooting Do each you, other, doing nothing. Have you tried uh reading rainbow? Remember reading rainbow? Have you tried that with them? No, no, I don't think we have. Bro. It's great because they read a book. And so it's like he's getting a book read to him and yeah. it's slower. So my sister, she's, um, I mean, she works with children. So she's got all the education with child development, all that stuff. And we were, my son used to watch Coco Melon on Netflix. And my sister said, that's terrible. And I said, why? She goes, pay attention to how many scene cuts they do when you're watching oh, it. Yeah. So I turned it on and I'm watching it and I'm like, oh my God. It's like, it's like cut, 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 cut. Yep. She's like, that messes with their attention span. Yeah. She goes, as opposed to something like Mr. Rogers, or reading Rainbow, where there, or Franklin. There's this cartoon called Franklin, where it's slower. Isn't it wild how, how ahead yeah. of his time he was when he when he did? I mean, that was the desired outcome of him creating that. I know mm -hmm. he saw what was going on with television and commercials back in the what 60s and 70s, 60s or whatever. 70s, yeah. yeah, he saw what was going on and said, "We need to." And he had exercises where he slows down intentionally, puts the timer on yeah, for yeah. one minute. Let's see how long a minute is, and you watch a, 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 a second hand going for <laughs> yes. a full minute. Yeah. Yes, you know. I mean, but so brilliant Putting to understand the, time. Yeah. the dangers or the potential dangers and ramifications of us, you know, doing this like super crazy yeah. fast. And I, I remember the first time. Do you guys remember? So I mean, obviously we we didn't grow up in the YouTube era, and so like we were already adults when that became popular, I remember the first time that I found uh, Logan Paul and I had, a, I got a headache mm -hmm. because our brains were not used to that. No. Yes. It was so wild that to see so. And I thought, Oh my God, people watch this. It hurt. Yeah. It hurt to watch the heat, the, the quick, fast, fast, so fast. You know what that's I've like? never seen that before you know what that's until like? him trip off this. Mm -hmm. That is like taking someone who's never had caffeine and giving them a 300 milligram 
you know, energy drink. They'll get sick to their stomach and throw up. Their brain, yeah, I got headaches from it. They develop tolerance because the dopamine hits and the scene changes and whatever. They actually develop tolerance. Well, and now I can watch it. Yeah. That's what's fascinating yes. to me is that to, uh, to recall, I totally remember the very first time I turned it on. And I remember being like, oh, my God, the people love this and watch yeah. it. And it's giving me a headache. Yet now I've adapted to this, you know, with reels and shorts and everything that we get all this quick shit now. I can now watch something like that and it doesn't bother me. Hey, yeah. so so let me ask you guys this, because as I get older, this is happening more and more to me. I wonder if you guys are doing the same thing. As I get older, I feel like the Amish figured it out a little bit. hundred <laughs> percent. Are you the same thing? <laughs> Ted Kaczynski, dude. I don't know, man. He had some ideas that were out there, but yeah. also also Bro, have you read his thing, dude? His, his thing manifesto is, was a little a little on point. too a little too on point. Dude. Yeah, yeah no, I know, I know what you're mean though. Like yeah, in like terms a, of how they've just decided, like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna stick with, you know, this traditional way of living and like where it's gonna be about family, it's gonna be building a community together. Like you actually have have to like you know build things with your hands like dude they figured all of it I, out. I swear as i get older i go man i wonder if the um and here's the other part of it is that you know I, you made a comment and jessica and i have talked about that uh where it's like well they live in the world today and so i don't want them to be whatever and she said sal she goes if you're going to raise good people you are necessarily going to be opposed to what's the norm that's in right society. that's right and that's the truth but so, i also think that that what we're talking about is already opposing it because I would yeah. say 95% of the people you already use iPads as a baby. So they they just put their kid in front of yeah. them. Yeah. So I already think you're, you're bucking the system or opposing it by admitting that, wait, we need to put some parameters yeah. around this. Yeah. So, because in there, and, and it's not all bad. Like I, I th that's the part that I think I've come yeah. a little full circle with it is like, listen, there's definitely some things that I've just like you just brought up. Like, you know, we found this app that we together we play. And by the way, I still think there is a bell curve to that. I think if I, him and I did that for four hours straight, I would see negative yeah. effects of him staring at a screen and not getting out in the sun and not interacting with other kids. Yeah. And so you just I still, have to know it's not innocuous. Like that's it's, right. It's going to affect them. That's so right. How can we like structure this where it's like a little bit more favorable? Totally. Yeah. All right. So this, you guys are reminding me of a tweet I did this Dude, morning. You should do a commercial first. We're already like halfway through. Do a commercial oh, you, first. oh, you know what? You know what? We are supposed <laughs> to talk about the commercial. We are still supposed to talk about Organifi. And we did mention caffeine. I do want to say this about caffeine. Um, and this is in, in in relation to their one of their newest products um, that I you know I helped uh, put together. Peak Power, caffeine is a very very effective CNS stimulant. It can improve uh, motivation, drive, improve athletic performance. However, there are Mood. negative side effects to caffeine, and one of the keys to using caffeine effectively is to understand how to mitigate the negatives and maximize the positives. So the product Peak Power is exactly that. It's got caffeine in it, but it's also got many other compounds in there designed specifically put in there to mitigate the, the negatives of caffeine. So this is why people are, are messaging us saying, I take less caffeine with Peak Power and I feel better or it lasts longer or this is a way different feel than I'm used to. It feels smoother, no jitters, no shakiness. I sleep good at night, you know. Well, I love the the amount that uh, you figured out in terms of like one scoop. Yeah. You know, we can we can add two if like you're a high or even uh, intake guy like me, and then kind of work your way to like a different serving. That's my well. favorite part of the formulation. I mean, before this, we started the podcast today. We were off air. We were talking about um, the way I titrate uh, kratom, mm -hmm. and I love that ability. And I I love that you guys created the formula. With that intent, like okay, people you can could, go up and they down, can scale, and scale up, yep, and in, like, and it doesn't over. You're not overdoing all the other th compounds that are in there. So the idea that you could scale up to like three scoops, be at your peak, and then slowly come down to two and one, I just I love that that yeah. concept because I already use caffeine or any other drug that I, I mess around with. I do that. I'll let, allow myself a certain amount. It gets to a place where I feel like okay, I'm I'm hitting that threshold. Now it's time to go back the other direction. Right. And again, there's other compounds in there that are designed <laughs> to mitigate the negative. So it does feel very different than your typical pre workout. It's a, it feels a lot better. All right. So now back to the tweet. So I did a tweet this morning. And I want you guys to guess which part of this tweet got the most, uh, I guess, which part of the tweet ruffled the most feathers. I feel like this will be an easy game. I thought so. I, you, you would think, but that's oh. not necessarily Oh, it. you think we're going to guess wrong? Well, I mean, I would have not guessed. Okay, let me hear. So this is what I wrote here. I said, modern challenges for men. Number one, avoiding garbage food. Number two, exercising regularly. Number three, avoiding pornography. 
And number four, avoiding distractions like video games and unproductive media. Which one of those four do you think ruffled the most feathers? The last one. Yeah. Yep. Video games. Yeah. Video games. Yeah. yeah. I had a bunch Why? of guys on there. Video games aren't bad. Video games are good. They're great. Why? What's I mean, I, I mean, I definitely <laughs> like the reason why that one jumps out to me is because I'm, I've told you guys before that I was convinced that I would be this age and still gaming. Well, like one crazy. guy, one I guy really goes on there. He goes, be. he goes, what's wrong with playing video games? Like, <laughs> video games are fun and it's a great way to pass the time. And I said, it's because you're, a, you're not a child anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my, my best Stop friend, my games. best friend, Mark at yeah, the time, yeah. I remember. So he's uh how many years older is Mark to me? You remember how old Mark is? Mark's a little bit older than you, like a year or two older. Oh than yeah. You? I think he's like, so, yeah, he's, so he's got like more. four or five years at least on me. Right. <laughs> um, and you know we were we we connected and become friends back when I was like twenty three even and, and we're friends all the way through twenties and thirties, and I remember being in my late twenties and so he's already into his thirties, and he'd be like, hey, you gonna you gonna give the video game thing up soon or what? And I'm like, what? Of course not. He's like, yeah, bro, you you're gonna have to drop that. You know that eventually you will, right? And I'm like, no. I'm like, I plan to do this forever, bro. And he's just like, <laughs> he's like, dude, you're that's like a that's like a child thing. I'm like, what? I'm like, you're tripping, dude. And I'm like, this is like, and and the reason why I identified so strongly is because it's a it's a bonding thing with my my childhood best friends and I. Sure. They, and by the way, they still game. Um, but what finally sold me was the the pursuit of like building uh, businesses and stuff on my own and the the learning that I needed to put into scaling and 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 being successful. Eventually the time. Yeah. Exactly. It became a time thing. It became like, wow, when I do the math, I spend an hour on on the low end to two to three hours a night, you know, five to seven nights a week playing these video games. Damn, that's like a whole that's like a degree after yeah. four or five years I could have I could have got. So Man, if I just applied that to reading books that are going to make me better, at, and and I was so driven to make more money and be successful that that became the kind of tipping point for me. Is yeah. like, okay, I'm really robbing myself of growing and learning. And if I if if I'm being honest with myself when I tell people how passionate I am about X, Y, and Z, or how driven I am, mm -hmm. am I really if I'm w willing to sacrifice that much time? to play video games instead of that, just because I love doing it with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. You don't realize it till you step out of it, I think too. Yep. And, and it's funny. Cause I didn't even realize my friends still played. Uh, but I had this moment where pretty embarrassing, dude, I'm going to be honest. Like my oldest was playing video games and you know, how PlayStation has like, like I'm still friends with my friends Yeah, and they saw that I was online and they're like going in to like play the video game with my son. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> Does that not like resonate with you right now? <laughs> like what a loser you are! Like what the fuck, dude? You play with my twelve yeah, year you're old. Yeah, you play my twelve year old me. kid, and I'm not there. And like you're talking, like dude, get busy with something else. <laughs> Jeez, I know. Like, well, I was no, embarrassed. Well, people get hella offended though by that. They because, do because there's uh, there's a huge gaming culture. And there and, is, and I had somebody message my friend, my boy. I mean, I like bro. it. It's fun, but like, dude, come on, you're like. That's what he lives for. You're he goes to work listen, and then comes home and does it. Listen, okay. This is not always an accurate litmus test, but this sometimes is. If it's something that makes a chick not want to hang out with you and have sex with you, it's probably not. <laughs> it's probably something that makes you act like a child and not a man. So if you feel embarrassed, if you go out with a girl no, most and you're girl, trying to impress her most and you don't want to tell her and, and she asks you, do you play video games and you lie? Or Bro, you, and, you're, you're thinking of our generation. The generation now, most girls, they, they, that comes with the territory. Like they, they I just, don't think so. Yes, it is. yes, bro. It's rare. I don't think a, a, a woman in her mid twenties who's actually looking to find a man no. that she wants to settle Girls down lie with. lie about that. Dude. I'm pretty well, sure. Well, that's why they. Yes, I, I they, don't. I don't deny that. I don't deny that they lie I'm about it. I'm a gamer it because no, I think not. I think that they've accepted it. Like that. That guys. Yeah, are teenagers. Gonna, but okay. Do you really think a, a a woman who's ready to find a man that she's like, look, I want to find a real serious partner. Hey, listen. This is this is do my. You, what do you think she's gonna say? She goes out with a guy. This is my. They're 27. My philosophy. I spend three hours a day playing video games what do you think she's gonna do my philosophy on this with is 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 similar to what finally got me to kind of kick it which was listen if you are okay and by the way this is not this is not a, a, a shot at anybody who you know works at GameStop or works at one like a store <laughs> like that or whatever and you are 30 years old 
and you and you're okay with your income and you and your friends do that and you're not trying to grow you're not and then by all means yeah but what i what 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 got to me was i was saying these things i was saying i'm gonna be this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna create this and like and i was and i was and i believed that strongly but then what i realized were my actions were not aligning right. i was i was not putting the same if i if i had put the same what i looked at it was like oh my god if i just put the same effort into these things that i say i'm very passionate about instead of playing the video games what we'll see what could happen and to me that if you're if you're because then you're lying to yourself but if you're like hey i'm cool with being a guy who smokes pot every night and plays video games for four hours and i don't want any more for my life then who am i to judge that that, that that's no, not the you, life for you listen the whole the whole like yeah, not, teach their own the whole not eat not judge thing i think is bullshit we we judge everything so that's below me that's a fact look you're you're acting like a child and that's okay you want to act like a child i'm going to tell you if you ask me if you say hey sal what's your opinion i mean, i think you're acting like a child if you want to live that way, I can't control you, but I sure can look at you. Well, I mean, like, the, the argument that one thing. of these kids are going to make or guys are going to make to you is that, I mean, you you see the money that's in it now, right? I mean, Yeah, come on, bro. How many guys are, are, are wasting immersive. their time playing video games are making a lot of money doing it? Not very many. Like, if you're a well, game designer. No, you're going to, okay, you're going to, you're going to get, you're, trust me, we're going to get some flack on this one. Watch. Because oh. the amount of kids that, I got nephews and stuff. What percentage that of the people that play video games? Much greater than you think. It's like somebody. Twitch, bro. Tw that's what Twitch it, is. Yep. Twitch is this it ability. It ain't, it, ain't a bu it ain't a huge percentage, I'll tell you that much. Well, no, but it's greater than it was during when we were kids. Okay. S still tiny. I, it, like, there's a lot of- I mean, listen, I'm not I'm not arguing. I, I, I gave up the games, bro, so yeah. I'm, I'm not, like, saying that. But I'm just saying that, like, there's there's people that are that passionate about it that think that that's going to be a career path or they're, or they're currently making money doing it, and so- That's a small percentage. And I get that. Look, if you're, it's like people on social media. Well, I'm on social media I know, media but all Sal, that's like you saying to somebody who has a passion about playing basketball and telling them to give up. No, no, Stop no, playing. no, no, no. Not even close to the same thing. You, not even close to the same thing. If you're playing basketball, you're ma you're remaining fit. You're that's your form of exercise. Uh, now, if you're playing basketball all day long and you're a grown man, and your wife is like, "Hey, you're supposed to be home from work," and every day you spend three hours playing basketball with your buddies, and you walk around wearing long jerseys and long shorts and whatever, and you're 45 <laughs> years old, well, yeah, you probably need to grow up a little bit too. <laughs> but <laughs> we're talking about video games, Dude. which is we're throwing so much shade. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know this is video. for sure. I have a lot of friends. I can't that, wait to that see live the YouTube comments games, on dude, this like, episode. Yeah, I, know. I know. I'm going to get a lot of heat. But, you you know. are absolutely going to get a ton of heat. I know. But I, know. I, I mean, I, I, I don't. I look. At, I don't totally disagree with you at all. I think that there's. I think it's a little. It's it's a little more broad and open than that. Of and course. I think to me, the argument is like what I said. Yeah. Like. It's a, it's is, an escape too for people, you know. Like I don't know. I guess everybody has kind of a vice, right? Like alcohol is one thing. Like so, some some of my friends justify it as like I'm not going to the bars. So that's how. I, so I'm going to go play video. The games girls that I like, used to get in fights with in my like late twenties that were girlfriends that would give me flack about. It, I'm like, would you rather me going to the clubs? With I love my boys? I love your false alternative by the way. It's so great. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. This is the argument they present. It, it is, is bro. Right? Look, I'm doing video. I'm playing video games, but at least I'm not doing heroin. Yeah. <laughs> what would you prefer? At least I'm not banging other chicks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> See, wait a minute. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, now you got like VR. It's like, hey, yeah, you, know, you can do both at could. the same time. Oh, Technically, man. holy oh. shit! All right, anyway. Right. Well, since we're on this, since we're on this path of talking shit, let's. Uh, yeah. I, by the way, I told, I warned you guys, I was in a mood this morning. So yeah, you are. I you see are. That. You've been I on one all that. week. I know. I we're gonna, I, pretty soon here, we're gonna fight somebody. I feel aggressive. Hey, let's I go. told you guys, we should have a, a gang uh, fight with another, uh, yeah. with other fitness influencers. However, I'm gonna narrow it down to biohackers. We'll put spikes on my mace. I said, only biohackers because I feel like we could take them. <laughs> <laughs> only biohackers. <laughs> They're weak and yeah. feeble. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ugh. We could take biohackers. Everybody else, I Easy. Don't know. All right, so who you got a bone to pick? All right, no, here? nobody specifically. Okay. okay. Uh, but I will say this this is annoying. I see this all the time. It's so weird to me. People who have, I guess, uh, like a traumatizing event or something where they're really upset and they're crying, who then take the time to video themselves and post it on social media. I don't understand that. I just don't Bro, understand. You know, that, you, you know that's a big pet peeve of mine. That's been something that I've had a problem with since we started. You know why? There, there's been a lot of it's that. It's the same example. It's the period thing. It's the, like, these things where people, like, and, you know, what's crazy there, it's to fake me. fake authenticity. What, I don't know what's, 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 what's crazier to me is the people that decide to do that or the actual people that get on to defend those people. And they're just like, why would you say that? They're being authentic, expressing themselves. I'm like, no, no, There's wait, nothing wait, authentic wait, wait, wait a second. Okay. 
And by the way, you I just think logistically how that all like comes to be, right? Like they have to set the camera up. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah. They have to like open the app. You have to open the, the app, app, go yeah. to yours, go to the store. You gotta to still have a little tear ready to go. You know, for it to to be powerful, and then cry to your fake yeah. friends. It's not like it's not like you are doing like let's say for example like this could happen, right? I could be doing a live and I'm talking for 10, 15 minutes, and then I get to a part where I talk about my father or maybe my dog who just died, and then I get choked up and then I cry. It happens, sure, yeah, like yeah. It, as you're building momentum, right? right? Yeah. But to literally, you know, video myself. Like crying already, or, or or like right into it. It's just, or even just a picture. This is me this morning. I was so sad. It's like you took the time to take a picture. Yeah, you it's were crying. We so okay. Yeah. What is that, Sal? Is it? I mean, obviously, it's some sort of a narcissism, right? Yeah, it is. Sure. And and look, I'm, here's a little self awareness. You know, what do they say? The things that annoy you the most in other people, you probably have some of yourself. Sure. Within yourself. So I think I can confidently say, and I won't call, I won't look, I'm not going to put this on anyone else. I know that I have, if you were to look at the narcissism scale, I'm probably a little more towards narcissism than not. And I think that tends to be the case with entrepreneurs or people who put themselves in front of people. You, you have to have a little bit you gotta more believe a, in yourself quite a bit. A little more, sure. right? So maybe that's what annoys me is that 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 part of me that I don't like. But man, it screams sociopathic narcissist, like to the extreme. Yeah, I feel like, like we're I at, need to show everybody how sad I well, am. It's, to me, it's just pageantry, right? It's, so it's like uh, you want to present yourself uh, and and depict yourself in a certain way instead of just like capturing yourself in the moment, right? It's not in the moment. You're just. You're now portraying yourself how you want everybody per to perceive you. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, did this? Did you see my post yesterday? Did you not? No. What was it? Oh, see, that's so funny. We're so like like a bunch of sorority girls in the same the same, same cycle. You know what I'm saying? Where we just <laughs> everybody was in a mood, right? I think I, that's what our wives say. Kappa Don't they all say Alpha Chi. So our, I, our wives all talk. And well, all. I guess. So I was. So there's this thing, and again, I'm not going to call out specific people, but there's been a handful of people that I've seen doing this where they smoke cigars. In their fucking Lamborghinis or Bentleys, or like, <laughs> and 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 I'm this like, this would annoy you. So <laughs> oh my god, it annoys you're me. ruining the car. You are. It's like, come on, like that's like it's a rental. Come and, on. I, and I and I actually posted about it. I'm like, what? When and why did did this become a cool thing to do? And and people are just like, oh, just you know, it's people trying to show how you know how much they have so much money. Who cares if they ruin the car? Like I'm like, that's just ignorant. Like there's nothing, there's nothing cool about that. Like you literally destroy the inside of your car and then you ruin the experience for your friends who get in the car who don't want to smell cigarettes when they get inside. Because, it, and, and by the way, like <clears throat> if you smoke weed, that's different. Okay. It don't stain the interior the same way. You can smoke a joint. By inside the way, of a this car. is true. Yeah. It's really weird. You can smoke a joint inside of a hot box a car. The next day you will not smell, smell it. No, in unless you, you smoke left. one cigar. One cigar Smells in there. Forever. It will stain inside of there and it'll sort of smell like an ashtray. Like, Hey, let me ask you guys a question fuck? about cigars. I have this, I have a theory. <clears throat> I have a theory that a small percentage of the people that post pictures and videos of themselves smoking cigars actually smoke cigars. Mm. Like they do it because cigars are, are deemed cool. It's fucking Joe Rogan's fault. Yeah. I Isn't swear. Like, yeah. After I, it, I, Arnold was the first uh, one, by the way. Yeah. Schwarzenegger was the first well, one. Well, do you remember a team and you remember like, we grew up with, like every, every like uh, badass. badass show. Like there was the one guy general is like, yeah. he's got the <laughs> fucking cigar. I mean, I like, I like, cigar I, don't know. I like cigars too, but I, <clears throat> the reason why I brought it up is because I kind of feel like it's in a similar category here. It's this, like when I go to have a cigar with you or my friends or people We're that I have cigars, something. I don't go like, oh wait, let me go get my phone, open up Instagram, and take a video of myself having my cigar right now in my expensive car. Yeah, yeah, I just well, yeah, that's yeah, that's ridiculous. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, of course, so you get dumb. bad at that. Yeah, that's what was yeah. bothering me. That was literally bothering me the other day because I had seen it was like the third one I'd seen in like a week or two, and I'm just like, what is this? Who started this trend? I want to end this trend. That's hilarious. Don't do that to cool cars. It's oh, just man. dumb. All right, I'm gonna bring yeah, up some what studies. Am I annoyed I'm gonna bring us. <laughs> I'm going to bring us to fitness. Do our, do our second commercial first. What? You want to talk? What do you, yeah, oh, that, that, we're, yeah. we're supposed to talk about Caldera. And uh, I do want to say this, Adam. Today, I was looking at your head. Stop it. And it was really nice looking. Because I know you rub it all over your head and face and everything. It makes you look your skin. 
Look really good. Thank you. And your beard. Thank you. Glistens thank from you. the caldera. Do you see the commercial that's going around? I think yeah. it's their. I think what it's is their, it? I think it's their best commercial. Is it the one with you on it? Does it really yeah. affect? Because it it really does feel like like the beard and the hair like it affects too. Like does it help? Like that's why I don't know if you saw me before we started this. I was I was rubbing it all and I rub it in my beard. I, I like. The, yeah, that's yeah. what I noticed. Yeah, it makes it. Yeah, they don't market cool. it for that though, do they? Yeah, you know, I I don't. I've never asked them if what the if it is supposed to be something you use, and I don't know, Sal, if you know, like because uh, you're more familiar. with with the, everything that's inside Justin of it. Justin puts it on his chest there. I do. He gets it all nice. <laughs> all I mean, do way, you, I know you were like tears. the worst when <laughs> it comes to anything that is pampering or taking care of yourself. <laughs> I am, so, I'm terrible. I mean, being completely honest with the audience, like, do you use, I know nobody in here uses as much. Doug uses it probably as close I use the, the closest serum, to me. But I don't like to admit it a lot, but. Um, they pay us, Justin, Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, do you, I, yeah, do you, but, you, but do you I use mean, it for, consistently for or no? Honestly, don't you have to lie for a commercial? No, not, I, I, like, do, I use it enough to make the justify. I would say probably like two, three times a week. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, so. And then you? That's a, every day. Oh, you are every day. Yeah, it's in my. And you are too, Doug, right? It's in my gym bag right now. Yeah. Yeah, every morning I use it. I notice a big difference when I don't. I like the smell of it. Well, okay, mainly. so here's what tripped me out. I actually didn't use it for a while because I have oily skin. And I'm like, I'm going to put oil on oily skin. That's not going to be good. It balances my my skin out. Yeah. So it's less oily. Now, you have dry skin, Justin. Yeah, yeah. And so it works for you, too. Well, every time we go to any of our other places, like Park City or Truckee, yeah. I'm like, ah, like slather yeah, myself in it. All right, study time. Here's the here's the t This came from the University of Toronto. Here's the title of the study. Uh, activity Snacks. Following meals may help, may help maintain muscle mass. And then this is a summary. Wait, 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 say, that, say that again. Activity so snacks. snacks? Activity, activity snacks. What do you so mean they're, activity they're, Yeah, what does that snacks? mean? I call those trigger sessions, by the way. Activity snacks following meals may help, may help maintain muscle mass. So here's the summary. Interrupting prolonged sitting with periodic activity snacks may help maintain muscle mass and quality, what according to a new snacks? study at the University of Toronto. So what they found was... Is that every it, when people were sitting for a long time, if they got up and did something for one minute every thirty to sixty minutes, mm -hmm. so if you're sitting down for ten hours, well, computer, I, well, can, can we back up? Why are they calling these snacks? I don't understand. Because they're short bouts of activity. Yeah, they're trying to be cute. Uh, yeah, that's it. Right. It's just a, it's yeah. a, just confusing. When it is confusing. when you're talking about health and fitness, like people are movement and yeah. snacks, like yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, this is yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry, not to, yeah, anyway, not to know. no problem, no problem. Okay, so let me tell you, let me break it down. So they took people who sat for prolonged periods of time. So, you know, eight hours, six hours at a desk or whatever. And every hour or 30 minutes, they would have them get up mm -hmm. and do about a minute or two of activity. So like sitting and standing 15 times in their chair, doing a walk, dude, doing, you know, really easy, not a crazy workout. This is like, and it wasn't even intense. It was an, it was a minute, it was 60 seconds of activity. What they found was that more amino acids, when they did eat, went to muscle protein synthesis. So it stimulated, ready for this? And I remember mm. someone saying this a long time ago when they first designed one of our first programs. Weird, I have something before, before it, that to it, bring up. In, it increased protein synthesis throughout the day, okay? <laughs> Meaning it, it sent this muscle building signal and it tilted it in favor of building muscle. Mm. Simply from doing one minute of light, moderate activity every 30 to 60 minutes. That's it. There you go. They found, and they were able to measure it. And that's why the title of this is that it, it's actually a great way to help maintain muscle mass. So this is what I found with trigger sessions. Mm -hmm. When I do three trigger sessions a day, I just, my, it's, it's just like, it's totally anabolic. And yeah. this may be what's happening uh, uh, based on that. And that was my speculation when I first- Which is awesome, especially in the muscle building uh, direction. The other part of it, the cognitive boost from it, like yes. you'll see from- Dr. Ed Thomas, I brought this up a long time ago, did uh, has implemented this in like Iowa schools and has had the best test scores out of like yep. any any state uh, in comparison to this like one county. And it's because they would get up and they would do like every yeah it was like every thirty minutes to out like they would just get up for a minute and do some kind of calisthenic or with like rubber bands and they would do an exercise and then sit back down and they were all in these like kind of tilted. Um, they had like a, a a cushion that they had underneath to kind of tilt their hips up, so they were a little more uh, posturally upright. So more active, they had to be more active. They're more actively sitting. engaged, and they had like way better result cognitively. You know what pisses me off about that is that we know that, and that that's not something and it's we not mandate. Promoted. The shit that we mandate and we make we, people we mandate and kids masks. Do, 
instead. And and that we <laughs> have we have fucking stupid. We have <laughs> studies to support that, and then you actually have people that have implemented it to yeah. support how beneficial that is for these kids. We see where we're going with yeah. obesity, childhood obesity, and stuff. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. Why? Why would we not? Why? Why would we? And, and I know, like, I love hearing these stories. By the way of teachers that are listeners of the show and we get these emails a lot right of where like, they implement stuff they like implement this. so so kudos to the By teachers the way, that are doing that because that's amazing and awesome to hear but why is that not like a, a, okay. a nationwide he, thing here's why yeah. i want to communicate exactly what you said i'm going to add to that the the i believe the main reason why it's not implemented is the teachers think it's too much work it's more work oh i got to remember to get the kids to do this they don't want to do it or whatever here's the feedback we've been getting from teachers Kids pay attention more and they act out less. So it actually makes your job easier. It feels like it's more work, but in reality, it actually makes your job a lot easier. All right, I want to end on one of the benefits of uh, one of our programs. I've never heard anybody express this benefit before, and this is remarkable. This is I've never heard anybody say this before, and it's pretty crazy. So this was from a gentleman. His name is Chris. He, he messaged me on Twitter. This is crazy. Check this out. He says, hey, man, just wanted to thank you guys. I truly believe that because of you guys, an elderly lady's life was saved. <laughs> okay, hold on. Right. I'm, in a rural, I'm a rural mail carrier in Mississippi. Been listening to you guys for about eight months. Got into your programs and had really neglected my lower body. I never deadlifted much to you guys. Anyways, so he's following MAPS Anabolic. Anyways, this lady is a little overweight and partially disabled, and she had fallen outside and couldn't get up. Being very rural, she had been stranded outside for a couple hours in 40-degree weather. I was able to deadlift her and get her in the house and safe. Oh, I honestly wow. believe I couldn't have done it if I had not been following your Is program. Is that a true story? That's his message Boom. he sent me. Oh, yeah. That wasn't under YouTube for like getting a free program? That was just somebody No, no, no it, was a, it was a message on Twitter. DM. Oh, no way. Yeah, dude. So we saved- That is awesome. We saved Matt Matt saves lives. lives. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good uh, guy, by the way. Before though, you officially- yeah, That's a, an incredible story. Before you officially hang up though, uh, shout out as far as the Instagram or oh, page yeah. that we right. follow. Uh, what we say? Nature is metal? Nature is metal. <laughs> Did you see the one Craziest the other day? Videos. There was one just- yesterday or the day before of a wedding it must have been somewhere like in alaska or something like that and the photographer is videoing the wedding and in, in the on the other side of the water is a grizzly bear just ripping into a moose while yeah. they're filming the wedding <laughs> yeah, while they're filming yeah, the, yeah. could you imagine that yeah. i feel dude i just feel like this page by itself needs to remind everybody that like wild animals aren't disney characters <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> they're vicious also so. is that an omen or something they're getting married in i know that can't be <laughs> Probably. I know I'd, I'd work that in my favor. I'd be like, "Hey, babe, yeah, yeah. yeah. later tonight, I'm gonna be the grizzly. I'm gonna grizzly devour boost. you. <laughs> it's gonna be fun." <sighs> hey, check this out. We'll work with a company uh, that makes a great product called LMNT. This is an electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. So there's no sugar, no artificial sweeteners, and it's got a lot of salt. It's got enough sodium to make a difference. Most electrolyte powders have nowhere near the amount of sodium that you need to replenish what you lose when you sweat. This is uh, very uh, important for those of you that like to get a good pump when you work out, who like to have improved performance. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And right now you can get free sample packs with any order if you go to that link. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Kelsey J. If we don't have access to dip bars, what would you suggest as an alternative to dips? I've heard bad things about bench dips, but don't know if they are true. Bench dips. Oh, is that where the, okay, the bench is behind you? Yeah. yeah. And they're saying that because of the stress on the shoulder, but there's yeah. a way you coach to it, so it's not so bad. Yeah, but right. it's also different, right? It's a different it's feel. A different, yeah. um, you could do weighted push-ups, which is somewhat similar because it's a bit of a decline. It's hard to say that um, it's a complete alternative to dips. Although I will say, if you're doing presses, bench presses, incline presses, dumbbell presses, you're okay not doing dips. Um, it's it's a great exercise, but it's not one of those necessarily one of those exercises where I'm like, oh my god, if you don't do them, you're totally screwed. But I do like them, and you can create your own kind of dip apparatus with two chairs or two benches or something elevated where your your, your knees are are bent, mm -hmm. and you give yourself a bit of a range of motion. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I, you know, I don't know if you guys have any, other I mean, two things, uh, one incline, close yeah, grip, close bench, grip press. bench press. 100%. Yeah. So that's the first thing I would say. Uh, and I actually like it arguably as much as I do just body weight dips. Um, and then the other thing, if, if you do the bench dip, so the cue 
Uh, the reason why you hear bad things about it is that you hear people like destroying their shoulders because the natural thing when you dip with the bench behind you is you dip away from the bench just because you you're you're at an angle and right. you go this way. The cue as a coach is to keep your butt and back close to the bench as possible. So I tell my clients I want them to yeah. feel the bench, Touch the bench, yeah, right. like graze mm -hmm. against their their back and their butt as they did with that, so they stay close to that. That'll take the stress. Uh, out of the shoulder or it won't be as stressful on the shoulders but yeah close grip bench press man i just think that that and at, at an incline so you're gonna get that real good deep range of motion on it and you can load it i think that's a that's a, a great exercise if you don't have the barbell dips yeah but i mean you could get to if you don't have the bars to do dips you could get yourself a suspension trainer mm -hmm. and do exercises that are similar you know i do like dips because it's a great body weight chest, shoulder, and tricep exercise. I think it's very functional. Um, it, it, you mean, some people may argue it's even more functional than bench press because if you're pressing yourself up, it's off, it's oftentimes picking your own body up. You don't always necessarily push things away from you at this horizontal kind of plane. Um, whereas with dips, you know, picking yourself up off of a chair or grabbing something, it's more functional. Uh, so suspension trainers, you could, you could yeah, get some I like alternatives. Yeah, I like that suggestion of suspension trainer because really it's about like bringing those elbows in close to the body, right, and in a pressing move and also being able to stretch the chest. Yep. So you can do that too with a body weight emphasis and you can really kind of angle it so you get some intensity to it. Um, so that would be a valid alternative, I would yeah, think. Yeah, plus the, the range of motion that you can work up to with dips is pretty awesome. It's hard to match it with almost any other – pressing movement like if you get really good and you get good stability and this takes time by the way don't just go and do this right out the gates because you'll hurt yourself but like you can get down in a really deep stretch with dips um and it's it's a you can connect to a really full range of motion so that's one of the biggest values i would say of dips so if you don't have dip bars um Try getting some, try constructing your own, or try using... Yeah, you can uh, make some, by yeah. the way, with PVC. And there's videos out there that are pretty easy to follow, do DIY yeah, kind like of options. Stands. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you kind of make these uh, like parallel kind of bars mm -hmm. that they make for gymnastics. Um, and I've made a few of them, so there's definitely that as an alternative. Next question is from Benny the Beast. How do you structure a PR day, sets, reps, et cetera? Yeah, we did an episode on this, right, Doug, where we talked about how to hit a PR in your deadlift. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the advice in there would be applied to pretty much any PR. But generally speaking, uh, by the way, powerlifters are the best people to look uh, towards for advice on this because that's what they, they're good at. They're good at training themselves to hitting a PR yeah. on day of competition. Um, so essentially what you want to do is the week before you want your workouts to be easy. So you don't want to have hard workouts leading up to your PR. You want to be really rested and fresh and that alone will make you feel stronger. You want to have good nights of sleep leading up to the PR. You want to be well fed leading up to the PR. So if you want to try and hit a PR, it's a good idea to eat in a surplus. It's going to be almost impossible to hit a PR in a deficit. And then here's some kind of little strategies that make a difference, but they're smaller. Um, I like to resensitize myself to stimulants leading up to the PR so that when I take the stimulant like caffeine, you know, 45 minutes before I attempt the PR, it's got like the, the juice behind it. Like I really feel it and I feel strong. And then lastly, prime. Prime mm -hmm. properly before going into the PR because um, that'll give you, at least for me, it puts me in the groove of the technique better so that I can maximize leverage and hit that number. Yeah, I like focusing too on sticking points of the lift um, in terms of like segmenting it out and, and you know, spending a little bit more time with either an isometric or, and this is basically somewhat similar to priming uh, for that big compound lift um, and to, to, to be able to generate more force there um, throughout the week and, and just have that as something I'm practicing really like, for me, it's about like practicing the movement and all the little nuances and things that I can um, account for before I go into actually performing uh, the lift. And so like keeping the weight light, but then focusing on my grip and, um, you know, how I'm actually grabbing the bar, what's the best grip for me, uh, making sure that I'm, I'm tensing it to point where, uh, so for instance, if I'm doing like a bench press, I'm getting, you know, a little bit of flat activation by like bending the bar, um, and I'm setting myself up better. I'm just really paying attention to all those little nuances of like how, uh, my body is able to kind of maintain the most optimal posture. So that way my force output is at its max. 
you know that that deadlift um, PR uh, show we did was I think covered most everything that we would give as advice. The one thing I don't know if I remember uh, talking about or not is that I think the the biggest mistake made in in doing a day like this or set, trying to go for a PR is actually not listening to your body and still doing the P PR day when you probably shouldn't. Mm. Meaning, I can I can tell if this is a day that I should even potentially uh, uh, attempt it right. by the way my warm-up sets go. So I, I have never said, oh, Friday, I'm going to go for a PR and then uh, stay committed to it if I didn't feel it right away in the morning doing my lighter weight. Yeah, Because I feel like you you can tell. You can tell by how in the groove you are, how, how easy the, the weight is moving or how light it feels relative to when you normally do it. And to me, like those are all the signals like, okay, today. And if I hadn't done a, haven't tried a PR in a long time, I might go, okay, this is a day I'm going to, let's see, let's stack a little more on today and see what I can do. Um, because I think that if you <laughs> commit to doing a PR one day and just it didn't align very well for you. Maybe you're still recovering a little bit from the last workout. Maybe you didn't get the most optimal sleep that you thought you did, like, or you weren't as fed as you were before. Like, uh, I, I won't, <laughs> I won't still try and attempt a PR if I can tell the warm up sets are tough. If yeah, that's that's good advice because you know that's how you hurt yourself, right? If you get hard headed about it and um, you feel like, oh, this doesn't feel good, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, PRs inherently come, or attempting PRs, I should say, inherently come with a lot of risk. A PR, it means personal record. So this is a weight you've never lifted before. And so the risk uh, is much higher. Risk of injury is much higher than with any other lift. So you better feel good and ready. And if, there's, if you don't feel good and ready, then don't try for it. And by the way, if you're not sure work your way up to it. And I do a lot of sets leading up to a PR, a lot of sets. Yeah. They're not workout sets, they're test sets. And I go up and then I go up and I go up. I don't go like warm up, boom, jump to the PR. Right. Um, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be very smart. Next question is from Fabi. What MAPS program do you recommend for bulking and cutting? All of them. Yeah. You know, bulking <laughs> yeah. and cutting is a, uh, this is a feature of diet, not the workout. They're not a feature of the workout. Uh, the workout itself, you're seeking physical adaptations, uh, so athletic performance improvements, strength, and then, of course, the side effect, muscle, more stamina, more endurance. Your diet will determine whether you cut or bulk. Now, that being said, I will say this. You, you probably want to, if you're trying to cut, you probably want to gear your workout towards building muscle during a cut because that'll minimize the muscle loss that happens uh, with a cut that can inevitably happen, especially if you're experienced with a cut. But besides that, like I could bulk on maps anabolic. I could cut on maps anabolic. I could bulk on maps aesthetic. I could cut on maps aesthetic. I could do yeah. that with any of our programs. It's really about your diet, whether yeah. or not you're eating a surplus or a deficit. Yeah. I picked that because it is a common question, you know, and people kind of want to know what's the, the best like pairing with that. I mean, the, there are situations where say like maps power lift, for instance, like I probably wouldn't be on a cut doing that just because the program is kind of driven towards like how you're increasing your strength and how we can kind of deliberately measure that. And, and yeah. we're using percentages and it's very uh, numerical in that sense. So, um, it, but all the rest of them, I mean, it's pretty fair game. And plus to the, to the point you're making of muscle preservation being uh, the the one focus in a, in a deficit. I never really thought of it in that regard uh, when, when I was like in athletics and kind of going through and like having to maintain a certain weight. I wish I would have thought of it like that instead of just focusing more on uh, you know the the overall calorie burn and and going in that direction. A uh, lot more beneficial if if you're trying to build up your physique and maintain muscle mass to be in a cut and have your program reflect that. Yeah. I think, I think we get this question a lot because people want to hear the science and what it says in regards to what is more advantageous in a cut, what type of training with a cut is more advantageous, what type of training is more advantageous for a bulk. And then how does that line up with our programs and so I think that's why we get it all the time. But the truth is that the difference between those is is so slim that the thing that matters most is the psychological the part. mindset. 
So what I encourage people that ask this question is to do both, meaning run maps anabolic one time and run it in primarily in a cut. Run maps anabolic one time and run it in a bulk. Pay attention to how you feel in each one of the phases and compare it to the opposite. So, and then let that be the driver of how you utilize that program, whether you use it in a cut or not, because the there's there's a, there's advantages and benefits on on both sides of the argument for you know running anabolic in a cut or a bulk. And so, um, and I also think that a lot of this is because the the marketing. Uh, yeah. side of the fitness space, right? There's so many people that are like, this mm -hmm. program, this is the program for getting shredded, or this is the program for doing, you know, for this, like, and because we've marketed to people for so long, that way people really think that like, there's, you know, a way you're supposed to eat based off of that. And yeah. it's really more dependent on the individual and more so on the psychological part, less of the physiological part. Yeah. Look at it this way. When you're looking at a workout program, find a workout program that is geared towards the adaptations you're looking for strength mobility stamina endurance and then adjust your diet according to whether or not you want to burn body fat or gain and that that'll that'll lead you better than trying to pick the best workout for bulking or the best workout for cutting now i know i know we're being very general here like obviously the muscle the program that builds the most muscle would be the best for bulking but i'll argue again the program that builds the most muscle probably would be the best for cutting too because it's going to prevent the muscle loss so it's diet. Look at diet when it comes to losing body fat or gaining weight or losing weight and look at workouts as a way to improve or to aim for, uh, you know, athletic performance types of uh, adaptations. Next question is from C Smith 731. What are some tips for a person new to the gym that feels social anxiety or intimidation in the weight room? Yeah, I don't have like a straight up uh, like silver bullet answer here. I will say this. Because I get this, right? I get it. I dealt with this a lot, not personally, but with you know people in the gyms that I would manage and run. And it was more often than not women, but you would see guys sometimes too uh, who'd feel this way, especially going into like a weight room or something like that. Sure. And um, you know, number one, nobody cares. And I don't mean like nobody cares what you're saying right now. I mean nobody really cares about you working out in the gym. It's, it, gyms are the most supportive places you'll ever find for anybody who's trying to change their fitness, their health or whatever. So you go in the most hardcore gym and you have zero experience and you go try and work out and you're not going to be judged. If anything, people are going to be very supportive and helpful, but that might not help you. You might think that and be like, I'm still intimidated to which I say this. And really the only answer is you just keep going. It's, it's exposure. Like mm -hmm. anything that gives you anxiety, well, I say, immerse that, yourself in it. Isn't that the answer for, I mean, anything, uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. This to me, the fact that we're talking about you know having anxiety going to the gym is no different than uh, you have anxiety about starting a business. You have anxiety about tests. You have anxiety mm -hmm. public I mean, speaking. The, yeah, yeah. I mean the best going to a party with people you don't know. That's right. The best recipe for that is to own it and face it. Is to admit that this gives me anxiety. This is very difficult for me to do, and therefore I'm going to do it. And you know, and then when the the worst case scenario happens, if someone does make fun of you or someone, again, own it. Like, yeah, man, I'm super new to this, and this gives me lots of anxiety, and I'm trying to work through that. I tell you what, if someone says something to you that's rude or mean, and you respond with being honest, that it does give you, they are gonna feel like a piece of shit, and I guarantee yeah. that'll never happen yeah. again. It won't happen in a gym, though. It I'm won't, though. Yeah, it's so stuff correct. Too, I mean, I hate to say it won't or it's impossible because anything of is course. possible, and there's there but is the a, least likely place to get criticized. I agree for trying as a gym. I I totally agree. So I mean, I I think that you're it's a it's one of those fears that you have, but I, it's uh, uh, it's one of those ones that if you if you actually go after it, you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised yeah. at the response you end up getting. You have to go in with like no questions, a dumb question at, at that point, and just kind of own that fact. Like I, I would say like too to uh, get over some of that, just try and find somebody, just ask them a question, like how what do they do in here? What's what's worked best for them? You know, and just like try and like connect with somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, like you feel like you're starting to kind of make strides towards being involved and looking at it more as a community and less of like a, a, a foreign place where yeah. like you're this outsider. So however you can do that and like, you know, the, this coming from the person that's like the least likely to want to go out and just, hey, like have small talk with people. That was a, a struggle for me uh, starting my entire career. So 
but it just took those steps. Like one step, I'm going to say hi, say hi to the front desk and, and I'm excited to be here, whatever. You know, whatever that is, you open yourself up to having conversations with people. You become more involved with the community. It feels less foreign and, and then you enjoy it. Now, my, again, my experience with this is it doesn't tend to last very long. Like if you go to the gym two or three days a week, you're probably going to feel some anxiety for about the first month or two. And then it kind of goes away because you've been going every single week and you'll, you'll have your routine and you'll know where you're going and what you're doing. That being said, if it feels debilitating, if your anxiety uh, or fear of going into the gym is really preventing you from improving your health, one of the best investments you can make is hiring a trainer by far. Now you have a guide and they're walking you through and they're taking you through and they're showing you what to do and you're learning through that process. And you're hanging out with the most yep. popular people in the gym. And you're, the you're, hang, you're hanging out with the people authorities possible. in yeah. the gym, right? Yeah. Those are the authorities in the gym. Is the, the trainers. ones too. <laughs> and uh, listen, I mean, I don't know how about you guys. How many times did you guys get clients who hired you because they were scared? They were yeah. intimidated by yeah. the gym. I think this is out. actually, I think it's pretty common. Um, I also think that this is a big reason why CrossFit did so good because they did a very good job of, Building community and yep. making people the welcoming feel, committee was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you you made a really good point. I mean, it's like you go into a new school and you you just you're, you have to you're, just expose yourself. Yeah, you you are you don't want to just go there, work out, and In mind an your own business, never talk. But I mean, you're yeah. you want to have a place that you feel like home and a community and and maybe that is how you decide the gym that you choose to. In most places, unless you're somewhere super rural. There's multiple gyms in your area and find the one that feels the most welcoming and that, you know, you walk in and the front desk person smiles and greets you or maybe someone who works there says hi to you or a member greets you. Like, I mean, I think that stuff matters when it comes to being consistent and enjoying the process. But I think approaching it as like you you are wanting to join this community. So I, don't be afraid to I say hi. Experience, no, I, didn't, I never experienced this in a, in a weight room because I had been working out as a kid on my own for a few years in the backyard and just obsessed over reading. So I felt like as soon as I walked in, I felt home at home, but I did experience this as an adult taking yoga. I actually took yoga for uh, yeah. probably about six months. And I remember I walked in and I couldn't have felt more out of place. Like I was like a muscle, you know, muscle bound dude or whatever. And it was all these, you know, kind of posh, you know, middle-aged women and their, their Lululemon stuff. I'm the only dude in there, or maybe one other guy in there. And I, the looks, like a lot of people were looking at me like, who's this guy? Why is he here? Like whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, the, it was probably this first or second class. And this was a wonderful reflection <laughs> on how not to run a class or how not to make people feel welcome. I was trying to do the poses. I'm totally new to this and I'm owning it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying, I'm doing what I can. I'm, str I'm struggling, I'm sweating. And the instructor, I'm trying to do a position and she giggles and she goes, oh, that's, no, no, you don't do it that way. And she walks over and I'm thinking in my head like, bitch, you just fucking laugh at me in front of the whole class. <laughs> you know, but I, look, I'm a confident person. So yeah. I'm like, whatever. But I remember yeah. thinking yeah. to myself like, man, if you were a trainer in my gym, I'd fire your ass for doing that. Like to make, <laughs> to make someone feel that way. Yeah. Or, or to try to make someone feel that way. Well, and that's remember, why I don't think it's safe for us to say that like it's impossible that this person could have not have an experience. Oh, like that. I'm going to tell you something right now. I think it's better. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm, uh, here we go. Since we're pissing people off in this episode, I'm going to say something right now. Hardcore weight, weight rooms are the most accepting fitness places in the world, far more accepting than yoga studios and, uh, and Pilates studios and aerobics classes and any other fitness, anything. Oh, yeah. I it, they that. are the most accepting places. And anybody who's been into any of those or or multiple of those will tell you this. Yeah, no. Those so are, I've been- Those, in, are, those are way more clicky. 100%. Sure. I remember the first, time, the first time I actually went into one, I'll never forget. It was funny because I didn't know this was even a thing. It was my first yoga class that I took in, in that. <laughs> and I got there really early, right? I want to make sure I was there early so I didn't miss anything or whatever. And- uh I roll my mat out where I'm going to be and stuff like that. And then the ladies start to come in and someone walks up like a couple of ladies are looking at me all look kind of crazy. And at first I'm thinking the same thing. Oh, they're looking at me because I'm the, the, the buff <laughs> dude. Right. And they're like, um, is that your mat? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, that's uh Susie's spot. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> they already had their spot. Oh yeah. Like, like they yeah. have like, when and they you, said it to you like that. Oh yeah. It was like, that ain't your spot. Like that's, and so they like the, there's people that that come there. So, so regular that they have their spots inside of, you know, an open gym of course. course 
where they go every single time. And I thought that was really interesting. I was That's like, I didn't funny. Even, I didn't I, even know that was a thing, you know? I was going to just ask, like, what the move is because, like, you know, are you the creep that's in the back, like, you know, <laughs> waiting for the downward dog or are yeah, you in the front? <laughs> you know, like, you yeah, I, took, go I actually took the front, right? Because I wanted to learn, right? And I, the one of my trainers was the yoga instructor at the time. And so I was taking the class, but yeah. That's um, right. You were trying to be a yoga instructor at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say this, though. I did. I so, so sad they didn't turn out. Uh, hey, to the defense, though, I will say this. I've also been to yoga classes that were really exemplified uh, what the whole thing with yoga was, which is this is your own practice. Take it at your own pace. It's a great practice. I mean, it's like good. anything else. It can be pretentious if if the you know the culture is like you that. You know what I think it is? I think it's because you're a big dude and people maybe think like, oh, I can make him feel stupid because he's a big guy and he can take it. I don't know. Oh, I think it's more that- Because I've seen- I've You, seen, if you're most people that are hardcore into yoga, are the they, they view big see, muscle-bound meatheads as the opposite of what they want. You guys said that about so, CrossFit. I had the exact opposite experience. Like, so- It was very clicky. There are a bunch of- dicks like like going in there it's like if you didn't know like the specific move or if you didn't know it was on the board to do like to be, and they and they would wouldn't even help you and they would just like mock you oh interesting yeah so uh, that really turned me off and, and, and uh, to begin with i was just there supporting a friend because he was like starting uh his own kind of club but do you think uh, you had any idea any 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 bit of that had to do with like your attitude going into it already like you were like yeah. fuck you this place all, all, i mean no i was i was trying to hide that trust me and <laughs> like i was like already let me, I, let me, immediately let i was me give you a little their, insight about yourself their Justin, stupid that, socks you, their when stupid you're trying shoes. to hide something the way you really feel you don't do a very good job <laughs> of hiding how you really feel inside you have a resting bitch face <laughs> nobody <laughs> said hi yes you do bro <laughs> I, Anybody yeah. we've ever done shit with that you yeah. you don't like, you do a very no, bad you know job what? of faking he's, it. He's he's as authentic. <laughs> he's the no. most authentic. Well, person. you know it then. Yeah. 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 So that, the most authentic person. So you know what that's else? my read yeah. on that is you walked into the CrossFit already like fuck this. Person. Okay, you know I'll take that, yeah. but also like <laughs> oh they're so nice and you know that was not my experience at all. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is if, if you're if you're quiet, you're not if you're being dickish. If you're just quiet. Mm -hmm. Like you look like a big angry dude, so that's probably what they're thinking, right? Yeah. Even if you're not no, being I've, that, I've got that. Yeah. You know, even from clients that were like intimidated to ask me questions, or like before they were my client, like they're yeah. like, I didn't know if I could like, because just the way that I, yeah, like I my resting bitch face. Well, and yeah. you're so attractive it's real. too, so that's always been it's some more it's difficult. hard to approach that people that are like yeah, yeah, very Brad Pitt. The irony yeah. is he's such a kind. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to your defense. You're like the kind. You're, the, you're such a <laughs> no. Such you are asshole. fucking no. You act like it. You're like the kindest person. Uh, that's the truth. Anyway, look, if you like uh, Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com <laughs> and check out our guides. Uh, we have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 